Hello everyone, welcome to Summit Church Fenton Online. I'm so glad you've joined me today, and as always, I look forward to sharing the Word of God with you. I'm conducting a series on the anointing, and I've been on it now for several weeks. If you've missed any of the previous sessions, I'd like to invite you to go into our archives and listen to anything that you missed on this subject. Uh, it's very important whenever a series is being taught that you hear all the parts of the series. And so, uh, if, again, if you haven't, uh, you know, if you've missed any of the earlier ones or if you haven't heard any of them, whatever, go back and listen to anything that you may have missed, and that'll get you caught up for what we're going to share uh, today, okay? And it's, again, it's very important that you, 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 know, you, you hear all the parts of a series when a series is being taught. So again, uh, anything you've missed is in the archives, and you can go there and listen to it for free. Uh, of course, uh, talking about the anointing, and the anointing is, uh, I, I mean, you know, it's the Holy Spirit and His power. The Holy Spirit and His power, when you talk about the anointing, and much can be sa said about the anointing, and I gave you some definitions in an earlier session, but, uh, and again, you can go listen to those if, if, you know, listen to the earlier ones if you've missed them, but, uh, Talking about, you know, the anointing, the Holy Spirit, His power. And we've been uh, uh, emphasizing His power. His power, you know, uh, uh, with the Holy Spirit comes His power. And that, you know, I guess technically we could say that that's the anointing, you know, the power of the Holy Spirit. You can't separate the Holy Spirit from His power, the, anoint, the anointing, the power of the Holy Spirit. And so, um, uh, and, and I don't believe for one moment that it's an accident, as I've been saying over the last many weeks, that I'm on this subject just by accident right now. Uh, I'm on the subject. I felt strongly led of the Lord to be teaching on this subject at this time. And so I'm convinced there's people out there listening uh, that, you know, you may be facing a terminal uh, health condition. Uh, or maybe it's not terminal, but it's, it's uh, you know, causing you a sickness, disease, causing you a lot of pain and, and suffering and, and problems. Well, got, I've got good news for you. The anointing of God is available to you. And, uh, you know, as I've been saying over the past many weeks, I know any number of people that should be dead right now, you know, <laughs> but, but they're not because uh, the anointing of God hit their bodies, healed their bodies, and uh, they're still alive today. So thank God for the anointing. Uh, but I don't believe it's an accident that I'm on this subject right now. There's people out there that, that really need to hear this. And listen, you know, <laughs> maybe you're listening and you don't, you don't, you know, you're not facing a, a terminal condition or anything like that. But you, maybe you know somebody who, who is. And so I would encourage you to pass the information on to whoever let them know you know, I'm teaching on this and invite them to, to tune in. I believe it would be a blessing to them. You can also, and I seldom ever say this, I guess I should say it more, but if you're watching on Facebook, hit that share button <laughs> and, uh, and, and share the message, you know, this message on the anointing on Facebook. And you never know, you never know, you hit and share this message could go, you know, this series on the anointing could go to somebody that you don't even know. You don't even know them, you know, they may be in a different part of the country or a different part of the world. And, uh, and, and because you hit share, they heard the message on the anointing what I'm teaching about, you know, this series and, and, and they may be facing a terminal condition and, and they could, could listen and get healed. So it's important to share you know, hit, hit, that, hit that share. Uh, you know, it's not, not that I want you to share me, but I want you to share the anointing, share the teaching on the anointing. It can help people. And like I said, you know, if there's somebody you know, tell them about it, but you just hit and share. You could share it, you know, it could go to somebody you don't even know that needs to hear it. So uh, anyway, but, uh, but we're using, we're, use, we're using for our text, Isaiah 10, 27, Isaiah 10, 27, King James Version. 
uh, which says, It shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. And this is talking about a yoke of bondage, you know, a, a burden. I believe the title that my wife put on this series is The Anointing, Burdens Broken, I believe is, is what the, the, the title is. But the anointing will break yokes and destroy yokes of bondage and remove burdens and, and, and destroy burdens. The, the anointing will destroy sickness. It'll, it'll, it'll remove disease. Absolutely. And so, uh, uh, so that's our verse that, that is our main text that the yoke, the yoke of bondage shall be destroyed. Burdens and yokes destroyed because of the anointing. And over the last couple of weeks, we've been talking uh, primarily about the anointing upon, and, and there's an anointing upon, there's an anointing within. We've been talking in the past, up till now, quite a bit about the anointing upon. The anointing can, can come on somebody. And, and if you're a believer, yes, you have the anointing within you. We'll talk about that either later today or next, next week, but, but there's an anointing upon. And before I get into the, the anointing within, within a believer, um, you know, we, we've said much about the anointing of God coming on, on a minister and, and then, and then the, that minister prays for somebody and releases that anointing into their, into that, that sick person's body. And again, you don't have to be a minister to have the anointing come upon you. I've talked about that in previous sessions, but I've given you many examples how the, the anointing has, has come upon me at times, uh, particularly uh, when, when I'd be in what, what I call those healing lines that we had when we were on location. And what I mean by that, a healing line is just, I'd, you know, make an invitation. Anybody want to come up, you know, and have me lay hands upon you. The Bible, Jesus said, the believer will lay hands upon the sick and they'll recover. And I'd make an invitation to anyone that was there. You know, I typically do it at the end of the service and and uh, anyone want to come up and have me lay hands upon them and, and pray for them and release the anointing into their body. And, you know, we'd have just over the many years, thousands and thousands and thousands of people over the many years would, would, would ha came into that, that prayer, you could call it a prayer line, healing line, and the ushers would line, the, that's why I call it a line, they line the people up uh, along the front, you know, and then I just go down the line and lay hands on people and pray for them. And, and so over the many years, uh, you know, thousands of people came into those lines. Now, now I'm talking over, over almost three decades. So uh, my church, the largest I ever had, had or that, uh, you know, probably, uh, I don't know, 250, 280 people. So I didn't pastor a large church, uh, you know, when we were on location. But I'm talking over time, you know, if you added everybody up that came into those lines, you know, you get into the into the thousands over over three decades. And, and people would come up and the ushers would line them up and we'd pray for them. And, you know, sometimes one person would come up, sometimes five. So I, there were time, there were lots of times where we, had, we, we probably had, you know, 90, 150 people, whatever it was, just come up and they'd be lined back around the walls. And it just depend on the day and, and all of that. But, uh, but, but people would come and we'd lay, I'd lay hands upon them under the anointing of the Spirit of God. And uh, we saw, you know, now not, not everybody got healed. And you can look in the Bible and you can see that, that, that in, even in the Lord Jesus' ministry, he didn't get everybody healed. In his hometown, the Bible said he could there do no mighty work. And it was because of the people's unbelief. But, he, but there were other times where Jesus just healed the mass multitudes. Absolutely. It wasn't that it wasn't his will to heal the people in his hometown. He, he tried to, but he couldn't. You could read that. We went over that in a previous session because of their unbelief. Yeah, you heard me right. Jesus couldn't get people healed there in his hometown because of their unbelief. See, and we talked about what conducts the anointing and what doesn't, and unbelief will not conduct the anointing. But, uh, but so laid hands on, I've laid hands on thousands and thousands of people over three decades plus. 
Not everybody got healed, but multitudes of them did. <laughs> Praise God. And, uh, and, and so we've been talking about that and laying hands, you know, laying hands on the sick as I've released the anointing into so many people over the years. And, uh, and, and you know, sometimes you could feel it, but most of the time you couldn't. Most of, and what does the anointing feel like? Well, it feels like electricity or, or heat when you can feel it. But uh, uh, I, I, a very small percentage of the time did I ever feel, feel the electricity or the heat. Okay, but that's where faith comes in. Okay, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not perceived with the five physical senses. And so, uh, and, and we laid hands on so many, and I, sometimes, sometimes I would feel it, most of the time not. Sometimes the people I'd lay hands on, they'd tell me later, they felt like heat or, or elect, electrical, like, it was like electricity. Most of the time they didn't feel anything, but multitudes of people felt what they did feel is they felt in their body that they were healed of the sickness. Absolutely. And, uh, and, and so we've been talking much about that, but I just felt impressed before we get into talking about the anointing within. Uh, I just want, this is just strong in my heart to share, share this next part here with you. So listen carefully. I want to give you some some uh, testimonies of some people, uh, and, and, and this can really help you. So, so, so listen very carefully. We had, uh, I remember one time there was a, a lady that, uh, you know, as we had our Sunday morning service, um, I, you know, finished this, finished the sermon and, and, and made a call. Anybody wants to come up and, and, and be prayed for, you know, for healing, come up. Now we didn't have those healing lines every Sunday, but periodically as the spirit of God would lead and direct. And, uh, uh, so I made a, that particular day I made a call for, a, you know, anyone wants to come up to be prayed for for, for healing. And, uh, so Sarah, many people came up. I don't know that day. I, I guess there's probably 40, 50 people came in the line, whatever. But I noticed, uh, there was a lady there that, uh, she, she got out of her chair and she was bent over. I mean, she was bent over and I mean, she, she was bent over and she was barely able to walk from about the middle of the sanctuary up to the front. And it, it took her, I mean, what should have been just a couple of seconds to walk up there, it took her minutes. I mean, and the ushers helping her to get up into that healing line. And, and I, what, I, what I didn't know is that, that when she showed up at church that day, it took her probably, you know, I don't know, probably 15 or more minutes to walk in from her car into the sanctuary, which is just maybe a minute walk or whatever. It took her like 15 plus minutes, maybe more to just to get in the sanctuary. And now I've made the call for, for the healing line and it took her several minutes to walk, which should have just taken a couple of seconds, you know? And, and so I begin praying for folk and, uh, and I come to her and, uh, and she's bent over and uh, so I remember that I, I, I laid my hands upon her and I released the anointing of God into her body. I didn't feel any electricity or any heat or anything like that. I didn't feel the, 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 the fire, the power, whatever you want to call it. I didn't feel it. I just laid hands on her. Uh, she told me later she didn't feel any, any heat or electricity like feeling or power. But then... Right after I prayed for her, right as I finished praying for her, I was impressed of the Spirit of God. It was just so strong to tell her to walk that way. And I pointed, I said, and she's bent over. She had to kind of get down. I said, I, I called her name and I said, now walk that way. And so, so she, in faith, and now she can barely, can barely move, but I, I said, now walk that way. And so she takes off walking to my right, what would be her left. She takes off just baby steps. The ushers with her there. She just barely able to go. And I continued praying for other, the other, other people that were in the line. Now it's interesting, uh, a little side journey here. When I was a young, uh, young boy, I guess in 19 years old, 20 years, right, right in there. Um, 
uh, I, well, no, I guess it was maybe, I was maybe about 20, 21, 22. That's immaterial. But the Lord, the Lord dealt with me and, uh, uh, uh spoke to my heart and, and well, actually he, he had, uh, uh, had given a word to, to my pastor at the time. And, and when I was just, uh, you know, 19, 20, 21 years old, the pastor where I went to church, he would call me up at times to lay hands on the sick. So <laughs> I've been doing this a long time. And uh, he had a word for me way back yonder. What, I mean, what do you mean a word for me? Well, a word that he felt the Lord gave him to share with me. The proof of the pudding's in the eating. So let me tell you what he said, and then we'll, and then <laughs> we'll see if, if it was from the Lord or not. So he told me way back then when I was around 20 years old, whatever it was, I'm 60 now. I know I don't look like it. I don't look a day over, what, 40, but <laughs> 60. But uh, this was back when I was around 20. And uh, right at the beginning of, of the heal, my healing ministry that the Lord had given me. And this, this pastor said that the Lord laid on his heart to tell me that when people would come in these prayer lines, that, uh, excuse me, that if... At times, at times, <clears throat> it's just the anointing of God. Sometimes his anointing comes on me, I start weeping. Uh, at times, and it wouldn't happen all the time, but at times the Lord would have me uh, do unusual things with people. And, and if I'd be obedient to do what the Lord was prompting me on the inside to do, that, that, that the, the anointing of God would flow and, and it, it, you'd see greater success, you'd get more people healed, as the Spirit of God would at times prompt me to do unusual things. Now, you see that in the ministry of Jesus, of course. I mean, there's times what he, he spit and made clay of the mud off the ground or the dirt of the ground and put it, the mud on people's eyes and told them to go wash in the pool. And they came seeing there's times he'd spit. And he'd, one time he spit what touched somebody's tongue and, 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 and their tongue was loose from their, in, their speech impediment, you know. Uh, what was it? I guess it was Elisha told Naaman to go dip in the in the in the river. What seven times? You know why? 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 Why does the Holy Spirit want these things done this way? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. What I do know is we need to be sensitive to the Holy. Excuse me, to the Holy Spirit and obey Him. And so. Uh, but but the word that the Lord had for me or shared with me through this through my pastor back at the time that if if I'd be obedient when the Lord prompted me to do these different things that uh, that, that we the power of God would flow and you'd see uh, you'd see more people healed. I know there was one time there was a, a uh, uh, and we'll get back to the lady that I said walk that way in just a moment but. These, these, these testimonies can build your faith, and that's good. Um, but uh, there was a, uh, a girl there, I guess I say a girl, but she was probably, I don't know, in her mid-20s, whatever. She had a big lump on the, on the back of her neck. It was like a golf, size of a golf ball, just big old, like a golf ball lump on the back of her neck. She came in the healing line and the Spirit of God just dealt with my heart to just slap that thing, that slap that lump, that bump, curse it in the name of the Lord Jesus. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and so I asked the girl, I said, I said, uh, I said, can I, can I, can I slap that, that, that lump and curse it? She said, why well, surely. And so I slapped it just like that in the name of the Lord Jesus, commanded it to leave. And within 24 hours, it was completely gone. She was on the worship team. This was a Sunday morning. I prayed for her. Monday night, that thing was totally deflated over the, that time, totally gone. Uh, I, <laughs> after we started Summit Church, I remember the first time in Summit Church that this happened, there was a fella came in the, into the uh, healing line and he had, he had a stomach disorder, stomach problems, some, some bad stomach problems. He was standing in the line there and the healing line and several people, you know, I don't know, 30, 40 people there in the line. He's standing there. And, uh, uh, and I prayed for him. Now, when I went to pray for him, <laughs> I felt impressed to the Spirit of God to just hit him, not, not hit him hard, but just kind of pop him in the stomach. You know, just, just not to, enough to hurt him, but pop him in the stomach. 
And so the Spirit of God was impressing me to do that, and I didn't obey the Lord because I didn't want to look unusual or, you know, we were <laughs> just starting a church, you know, and I didn't, I don't know, all kinds of natural thinking comes in there, so I didn't obey the Lord. I just prayed for Him generally and moved on. And, uh, uh, and I could see, I could see I missed it. Long story short, I, I, I call him back over and I said, I, I asked him, I said, does your, your stomach feel any better? He, he said, no. And so I said, well, I missed it. I said, now, sir, I said, would it be all right if I just, just kind of hit you real lightly right in the stomach? And it, <laughs> he said, hit away. <laughs> And so, I, and so I said, well, just raise your hands to the Lord. And he did. And I just said, in the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, hit him in the stomach, be healed. And instantly he was healed. Can you say amen? Glory to God. I know there was a fellow in our church who had been uh, diagnosed with fibromyalgia. And uh, this was a very smart man. I mean, very smart. But this, this disease had affected him so badly that, that when he would leave work, he'd get he'd head home, he'd get about halfway home, and he couldn't remember how to get home. He'd have to call his wife and get directions. We're talking a man in uh, probably in his thir mid-30s, you know, somewhere in there. Very, very smart man, but he had fibromyalgia. He could, he, he could not uh, remember how to get home. And it was affecting him in many other ways. And so now I knew he was there that day. And, and I knew he was had that. Now I could. I knew he had a disease. I didn't know it was fibromyalgia. I, I could, didn't know. Anyway, didn't even know how to pronounce it. But somebody told me he was ill. My wife told me that he was ill. And so I. But I made. A, I, it, I was impressed with the spirit of God to make a, a altar call for for healing that day. Now you think I did this every Sunday, but I didn't. I'm giving you the highlights. So it sounds like we did this all the time, but we'd have the healing lines. And, oh, I don't know, maybe once a month or whatever. What that probably a good average on it. But anyway, but I made that call, and this guy with fibromyalgia, he didn't come up in the line. And so I thought, I thought you know, you're just thinking because I don't know several other people came up. I don't know, 20, 30 people came up, but he didn't come up. And so in your natural thinking, and so. Uh, I, I remember I was praying for people and I got about halfway through praying for people. Now he's standing there in the congregation and the spirit of the Lord just prompted me to go over and just slap him upside the head and say, be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, you know, I did. You know, well, what are people going to think? What, you know, you got all these thoughts going going through your head when you're the minister. <laughs> what, are, what are people going to think? And then you always have to deal with this. You know, well, what if it doesn't work? Well, I like what one guy said. What if it does? <laughs> Glory to God. And so, and you got to, and I'm going to give you a scripture later on in this series. If you want to flow with the anointing, you got to, you got to tell you what, you got to not be concerned about what people think. And so anyway, so I walked over to him. And, I, and, and, and he's standing there looking at me, and he, he knew me fairly well. And, uh, and, 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 and I said, uh, I, I just, I didn't even ask his permission. I just walked up to him, and I just, no, I didn't hit him hard, but I just hit him hard enough. And I just, I said, I hit him upside the head. I said, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, hit him like that. Not, not hard enough to hurt him. Be healed. And <laughs> glory to God. And he also was on the worship team. And he came in the next, the next, uh, the next night and uh, things were better. And he was, long story short, he was instantly healed of fibromyalgia. Can you say amen? Glory to God. There was a, a girl that came into the line one time and she had an ulcerated cornea in her eye. Uh, it, it looked ugly. I mean, that, that eye looked ugly. There was even a, a chance that she could uh, have her vision really badly impaired, outside chance that she could lose her vision in that eye. And it was pretty serious. And she came in the line, and just as she, as I stepped in front of her, the Spirit of God directed me to, to just blow in her eye. And I said to her, I said, I said uh, would it be all right if I blew in your eye? She said, surely. And I, in the name of the Lord Jesus, be healed. And, and, it, <laughs> and she recovered from that hour. And that was a serious diagnosis the doctor gave her. It, 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 there was one time, a, a, there was a boy came in the line. I guess he was probably about 12 years old and he had his kneecap. It was, it was, it was not 
broken, but it was close, if that makes any sense. He was in terrible pain. And I know he was in the line there and I got up in front of him. Now, most of the people, we just prayed for a general prayer. Just most of the people, we just prayed a general prayer. But these were times when the Spirit of God, you know, prompted me to do something out of the ordinary. And I remember with him, I, I, was, supposed to, I was supposed to just slap his kneecap. I think it was like slap it like three times. Why three? I don't know. That's just what I had on the inside. I, boom, boom, both hands together. One, two, three, in the name of the Lord Jesus, be healed. And that little 12 year old boy, his kneecap was healed. Glory to God. He's there crying. I, he's there crying. He's healed. Glory to God. I tell you what, that's reward for me. Just watching a little 12 year old boy crying because he's been touched by the power of God. Glory to God. So uh, almost without exception, whenever I'd have, whenever the Spirit of God would have me do something, <laughs> do, do something out of the ordinary, almost without exception, the people would, that, that I minister to would be healed. I know one day, one guy, one guy came in there, he was sick, and he said to me before the service, he said, if you have a healing line today, he said, and, and I come in it, he said, will you kick me? Will you slap me? Will you spit on me? Will you do something? I said, <laughs> I said, I, I can't, I said, I can't, I don't make that work. I can only do that as the spirit of God wills. Glory to God. And so, uh, but, but I thought that was comical. He said, he said, you know, kick me, slap me, spit on me, do, do something. So, but I think as I recall, when he came in the line, I didn't have any unusual manifestation to, to do anything and prayed for him. And I don't remember what happened with that guy, but uh, you can't make these things work. It says the spirit of God wills. Anyway, back to this lady who was bent over. And, uh, uh, <laughs> and so I said, go that way. That's what I, I, usually I just pray for her and just, just send her on her way, you know, and uh, you know, we'd check up on her later on. But, uh, but right there, I had that, imp that the spirit of God said, walk that, I said, walk that way. <laughs> So she goes off, this baby steps off that way, ushers helping her. I'm praying for the other people. And she walks to the end of the front row. She makes a left. Now, I'm, uh, it's been minutes has gone. I mean, it's probably been 10 minutes or more that <laughs> to take. I mean, she walked to the end of the front row, made a left, and she got, she got back to where our sound booth was. So that's a, you know, you can walk that in, in 15 seconds or less. Now we're probably 10 minutes in here and she's, now I prayed for her, release the power of God. I didn't feel nothing. She didn't feel nothing, but she got around to that sound booth and I'm up here praying for other people. And all of a sudden back at that sound booth, I mean, the whole church back in that area particularly went nuts. I mean, I'm up praying for other people and it, it I mean, it was just a, just a, just a, just a scream and a cry of just excitement from the people. You know, and I snapped my head, looked back, but when she got around that sound booth, the power of God just hit her and she straightened herself up as she started, now she could barely walk. She starts running and she's running around the sanctuary running. I mean, she's running around the sanctuary. Can you say amen? Glory to God. Glory to God. Now I share that with you, but now here's what I really want you to listen to. She, she is just wound up, you know, and she's excited and the whole church is excited and giving glory to God. I can't heal anybody. Jesus is the healer. So we're glorifying the name of the Lord Jesus. Anyway, so the service closes up and she goes home and then she tells me this some, oh, I guess it was the next week. She told my wife and I what happened once she got home. Now listen carefully, said all that to say this. She gets home and she got away from, there is a corporate anointing. There is a corporate anointing. It, it's, you know, you know, what, there's power and agreement. The, the anointing is the power of the Holy Spirit. And when you get believers in agreement, the atmosphere, it gets more powerful. It just does. There is a corporate anointing where, where you get, you get believers together in one accord and you see it in the Bible, how they, in the book of Acts, how the church was in one accord and how the power of God would flow. Well, she was in that corporate anointing and, and, but then she got back to her house 
and she's just rejoicing. And the next thing you know, that thing came, that, that, that thing came back on her that, that, and she's bent back over. That sickness came, that whatever it was causing that, she's bent back over in pain. Now, here's where you got to listen carefully. Once the anointing of God has ministered to you, okay, you have to remember this, that you have to stay in the Word of God. You, you, you have to stay in the Word of God. You have to, you, you just do. You have to be... You have to stay under uh, under the word of God. You have to stay in the word of God. You have to keep yourself in an atmosphere where the word of God is being fed into you. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You have to stay in that atmosphere uh, uh, of the word of God. You just do. The Bible says in Proverbs 4.20, Proverbs 4.20, King James Version, My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those who find them and health, health to all their flesh. And so you need to remember that. Um, you know, it's like going to a doctor. It's like going to a doctor. And I'll get back. I'll finish that story with this lady here in just a minute. But it's like going to the doctor. And sometimes you go to the doctor and the doctor will give you a, a, a shot, okay? But a lot of times he'll also give you a prescription. You go to the drugstore and get, you get pills and you take those pills for like seven days or whatever. And then, and then that completes the, the healing process. See, now we, th we don't have a problem with that in the natural realm, but in the, in the spiritual realm, you know, we think that all, all healings ought to be just instantaneous. Well, thank God there are miracles of healing that are instantaneous. <laughs> thank God I've seen, I've seen a good number of those. But, but what I've seen far, 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 far more of than that is we lay hands on the sick and they'd recover from that time forward. And, and sometimes it would take, you know, it would take a good while. It'd take days, weeks, months or whatever for, for the healing to fully manifest. You need to realize that. I, I didn't see all these healings of these multitudes <laughs> you know, where they were all healed instantly. Some of them were, but for every, you know, one that was healed instantly right on the spot, there were far many more that it was a process. Just like when you go to the doctor, he give you know, he gives you a shot and then he gives you medicine. I remember when I was growing up, I used to have a lot of trouble with, uh, with sore throats and strep throats. And now this was before I knew anything about faith. And, uh, I remember I'd, I'd have sore throats and those strep throats. And the one time that strep throat was so terrible. I remember I went to a, a, doc, to a doctor and I remember he gave me a shot. And then, but I didn't start feeling better right away. And then he gave me a, wrote me out a prescription. I went over to the drugstore and, uh, and, and he put me on, I think it was amoxicillin for three times a day. I think it was for like seven days. And, you know, after a couple of days came and went, I, I felt better and all of that was gone. And then they tell you, take all, take the whole bottle of medicine, take it all, <laughs> you know, so that you don't, because a lot of times people be taking their medicine and they get to feeling better and then they stop with the medicine. I did that one time because back when I didn't have much money, I, I bought, they gave, the doctor gave, this was another time, the doctor gave me some amoxicillin. He didn't give me a shot on that occasion. This is a different doctor. But when we were living in, in Oklahoma, going to Bible school, but I had a strep throat thing. He gave me medicine, didn't have a lot of money. So I took half of, <laughs> I took, I took half of the, uh, I took half of the, uh, uh, pill bottle. And then I was going to save the other half for the next time. But I might need it. A real man of faith and power. Thank God we've grown some over the years. But what happened is I didn't take all my medicine and then and I got to feel it real good. And then that came back on me and I had to go back and he had to give me more medicine. Then I took the whole bottle, you know, and uh, thank God I, I was, uh, it left. But you know, uh, it's important, you know, if the doctor gives you a shot, if he gives you medicine on top of it, that you take all your medicine, you know, all those pills on top of the shot. You understand what I'm saying? And so like, 
like uh, when uh, you, you get prayed for and the anointing of God is released into you, that's like getting a shot and then staying in the Word of God, reading the Word of God, studying the Word of God, you know, uh, uh, staying under the, uh, under, uh, uh, in a church where the pastor is preaching and teaching the Word of God, that's like taking your medicine, your pills. You know, so the anointing is like to shot when the, when the man lays hands on you, the man or the woman of God lays hands on you <laughs> under the anointing. That's like getting a shot at the doctor and then staying in the Word of God, under the Word of God, the teaching of the Word of God. That's like taking the pills out of the bottle, okay? <laughs> Glory to God. You know, I will say this, that when I was younger, I had far more trouble with, uh, with those strep throats and those sore throats, but... But over the years, now listen to this, this will help you also. I cleaned my mouth up concerning my talking of sickness and disease. Um, I, when I was younger and as I grew up, uh, you know, my mom, I love her to pieces and she, she was a, a great mom and she loved the Lord and believed on him. She's in heaven right now, but she didn't know anything about the principles of faith and the power of confession. And so we always talk, she talks sickness and disease, you know, oh my gosh, I, I'm gonna, probably going to get a cold. I'm probably going to get the flu, this, that, and the other. And so I was raised in that environment. Now, great mom, great environment, but I'm talking spiritually now. And it was, uh, you know what I'm talking about? We talk sickness and disease. See, people think they need to clean their mouths up concerning cussing and that's our lying. And we, we do need to do that also, but we need to clean our mouths up con concerning talking sickness and disease. And so I grew up talking sickness and disease. Flu season had come and I'd say, well, I I'm probably going to get the flu this year. Uh, or I'd say something like this. I wonder when, I this is what I'd say. I wonder when I'm going to get the flu. Or I wonder when I'm going to get that first strep throat. That kind of stuff. And uh, the Bible says we need to order our confession aright. And it doesn't just have to do with lying or cussing or that sort of thing, but or gossiping. We need to order it right, right there and not do those things. But we need to order our confession right concerning uh, talking, uh, speaking healing. And, and I could preach hours on this, but we need to speak health and healing, not sickness and disease. And I know this, over the years as I cleaned up my mouth and, uh, and stopped speaking sickness and disease, uh, I was I was sick less and less and less and less. And one other thing, back many years ago, about over ten years ago, I I was way way overweight, and I lost about sixty pounds. I got I, or I straightened up my eating, my diet, and I started exercising. And when that weight came off of me, my immune system kicked in. And I tell you what, that helped me also. You know, there's a lot of people that they want the anointing. They want they want to be prayed for and have the anointing released into their body, but but. <laughs> They're violating so many natural laws that I'm just, I'm just telling you, you violate natural law. It's very hard to get that anointing to flow into somebody that's knowingly violating natural law. I've prayed for any number of people that they were so far overweight. And I can talk about this because I was way overweight and I've overcome that for the, for the most part. Praise God. And uh, but, but when I got my... the the, the there's one good minister says it's the natural realm and the supernatural realm coming together, making an explosive force for God. You got to get both realms working. And when I got my weight under control and my eating under control and I, I straightened up my diet and lost weight, my immune system kicked in. And, and that even, let me sum it up. When I started confessing the word of God out of my mouth and started talking healing and health instead of sickness and disease, I saw a vast improvement in my health. I, I, I seldom had to ever deal with the, with the strep throats and the sore throats. And it's, I can't tell you when the last time was I've had a sore throat. It's been years and years and years and years since the last time I had a, a sore throat even. But what I'm also saying is, is once I get the, got the natural realm under control, that even helped it far more. Glory to God. And uh, I know there was one uh, time back many years ago where the stomach flu was going around and some of the family members had the stomach flu and I was around them and it didn't even phase me, didn't, didn't get me. And, uh, but I'm convinced in that case because I, I had just lost all that weight and my, along with speaking right and ordering my confession right in line with the Word of God, but together with that, the, the, the natural realm, I had my immune system up going real good. And praise God, 
I missed having the flu. Can you say amen? But I've prayed for any number of people that they've come in the line and they, they were violate natural law. They were eating wrong. They were, you know, 40, 50, 60, 100 pounds, in some cases overweight, and they got knee problems. They want you to pray for their knees or they got, you know, their blood sugars off or diabetes or whatever it is. And, and you, you know, you, I've got, I got very little success with any of those people over the years because they don't really, those kind of, those, those situations don't really re require the anointing of God. They just require people to start doing smart things in the natural realm and eat right and exercise and get that weight off and so forth. And that takes care of the problem, you see, in many cases. So, so if that's you, if the shoe fits, wear it, you know, and if the shoe doesn't fit, maybe you need to lose some weight. <laughs> oh, I, <laughs> well, again, you know, trying to help you. So, you know, just, you know, examine yourself, judge yourself. Okay. But, uh, but a lot of folks want that anointing to flow, but they're violating so many natural law laws that I think you get what I'm saying. So let's have the natural realm running right. The supernatural, don't talk sickness and disease, talk health and healing. Say what the Bible says about your condition. All right. And the natural and the supernatural come together, make an explosive force for God. And I hope you see here that I'm all for good doctors. I'm all for good medicine. I'm all for good hospitals. And as I've said in a previous session, let's take advantage of those if we need to. Praise God. But but let's just let's just be sure we're doing everything that we know to do in the natural realm, the supernatural realm, the spiritual realm, and things will go better for us. Anyway, so this lady. We're going to finish her yet here. So she's healed. She could barely walk. She, the power of God hits her over by, by the sound booth. That's where she was when the power hit her. And she's running around the room. Now she's at home, away from the corporate anointing. And now the sickness that comes back on her and she's bent over. And she told my wife and I, she said she had quite a battle that afternoon at her house. The Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. And so that, that came on her. She's bent back over. She got to her Bible and she started reading healing scriptures and meditating healing scriptures, declaring the word of God. And she said at a certain point, that same power that hit her in church, hit her there in her in, where she was living. And she said she straightened up and she was totally healed. And she walked, walked free of that, as far as I know, to the present hour. Can you say amen? But you see... She, she, it wasn't just enough to have just the power hit her, the anointing hit her, but she had to follow it up. Like when you get a shot at the doctor, very often you have to follow that shot up with, if they give you medicine, well, I can tell you, in the, you know, to get that healing fully manifested. Well, I can tell you for sure in the, in the spiritual realm, when, when, you know, you get prayed for and the anointing of God goes in you, that's like getting your shot, but then you need to stay in the written word of God. Take, take you like taking your pills, take your medicine. How long am I going to have to do that, Pastor? Can I do that just for seven days like I'd take amoxicillin? Uh, no, with the Word of God, you need to stay in it the rest of your life. You mean I'm going to have to stay in the Word of God the rest of my life? Well, either that or you can go ahead and let the sickness come back on you and die. You know, if you're saved, go to heaven. But why don't, you, why don't you stay in the Word of God and live out your life? What do you, what do you say? Amen. <laughs> Amen. So I'm thinking now of another story along these lines. There's a man, uh, he was a church member, I had known him for many, many years. He called me, he said, could you have lunch with me? I said, sure. Met him for lunch. He said, I've been diagnosed with bladder cancer. And it was a very terrible, terrible uh, uh, prognosis. And uh, uh, you know, diagnosis, a bad, they were gonna wanna, they wanted to remove his bladder and, and, and all kinds of chemotherapy, all kinds of stuff. It was a bad, dire situation. And so I said to him, I said, uh, I said, well, uh, we were having lunch. I said, now, uh, the next time I have a healing line, I said, why don't you come in the line? We'll, when we're under the anointing, we'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. And he, he, you know, somebody said, well, why didn't you just pray for him there when you're at lunch? Well, I could have, certainly, but I wasn't under the anointing at that, at that time. That, that special anointing to heal the sick wasn't in manifestation there. Now, I could pray for him generally, and, and we've done that over the years, so we've got some results, all right, but, but we get far better results if I can lay hands on somebody when the anointing's on me. I'm just telling you. And so I told him, I said, you know, I could pray for you right now, but I said, why don't you come in, come in the line, you know, it, it, probably going to have a healing line on Sunday, come in the line, 
And because uh, uh, I'd already prayed about that service and I, I felt like we we're going to have one anyway, a healing line. So come in the line, we'll lay hands on you. So he comes in the line, laid hands on him. I didn't feel anything. He didn't feel anything. He told me later as far as any electricity or heat or anything. But guess what? He felt in his body eventually in the next short period of time that he was healed of that. And he came to me. A couple of weeks later, whatever it was, he comes to me shortly thereafter with a doctor's report that he was totally and completely healed. Now, I can say amen to that, but now listen to the rest of the story. I want you to get this. Like with that lady that was had trouble walking and then she was healed and then, then, then it came back on her. What happened? She had to get into the Word of God to get the full, the full manifestation of healing. Now listen to this guy that was healed of bladder cancer. So he's rejoicing. Everybody's rejoicing. And, uh, and, and so he's in church there, uh, him and his wife, for the next several, I don't know, month or so. But then in the process of time, I don't see him on Sunday morning anymore. And then, uh, I, I, I mean, so anybody's going to miss a Sunday. Anybody's going anybody's to miss maybe two in a row. But I didn't see him for the third Sunday. And then, and then the fourth Sunday, I didn't see him. And so I asked his wife because she came every Sunday. And so I, there when I was greeting at the door, I pulled her off to the side there in the foyer. And I said, said you know, I miss, I miss your husband. I'm, I'm going to need to call him on the phone here and check on him. But why don't you tell me, is he all right? I haven't seen him for about the last four Sundays. And she said, oh, he doesn't think he needs to come to church anymore. I said, what? He said, he doesn't think he needs to come to church anymore. I said, well, is he, is he reading the word of God? And no, he doesn't think he needs to do that anymore. And so, oh my. So <laughs> man healed a bladder cancer. So I, I called him, I called him on the phone, talked to him. And he, he said, he said he didn't think he needed to come to church anymore or hear the word of God. And so I began to pray about it, and in my prayer time, I, I didn't hear an audible voice, but the Lord spoke to my heart, and you can learn a lot from this now. That's why I'm taking the time with it. Uh, the Lord, I, feel, I felt, spoke to my heart and said to tell him, tell this man that, uh, that, that if he doesn't stay, you know, certainly in the Word of God for himself, and if he doesn't stay in church, now not, it doesn't have to be my church. <laughs> it doesn't have to be my church, okay? But it, but it has to be a church that teaches and believes in healing. Now, side journey. A good minister told this story about a lady. I guess it was back in the 50s, somewhere when those healing, the healing revival was on here in the United States, and she attended a church that believed that all the healing power of God was passed away in the, you know, with the last apostle died, all the healing power is, is not being, you know, isn't flowing anymore. And they were like a cessationist church. They believed that all the power of God ceased with the dying of the last apostle. And she was crippled in a wheelchair, and she attended that church, and, and they didn't, they, they, you know, they believed that, all, that healing wasn't the will of God. It wasn't for today and all of that. This goes back into the 1950s, somewhere in there. And so there was a healing revival come to her town. She went to the healing revival and she got healed. She came out of the wheelchair. Can you say amen? And then she went back to that church where, where she attended and uh, they didn't believe in, in healing. And they saw her walking and instead of rejoicing, they found out what had happened. And they said, well, we don't believe in the healing power of God. <laughs> and she, long story short, she winds up back in a wheelchair. <laughs> now you think about that. They saw this woman that they knew was crippled. She went to the healing revival. She totally healed walking around. They said, we don't believe in that. And she's, you know, it's important. You had, the Bible talks about having, you know, the disciples, they came to their own company you have to have and, and and the bible talks about like precious faith you need to be in a church that that uh, uh, if you believe in healing you need to be you should believe in healing because the bible teaches that you ought to be in a church of those with like precious faith your own company where where you know your church your local church the preacher the pastor believes in healing the church the members believe in healing but she went back to that church and she lost her healing and so she, after a while, she got to thinking, you know, this is crazy. What am I doing? I come back here, I'm in the wheelchair. So she left that church. She found her church that believed in healing. 
that believe the Bible, and she got in it, and she got her healing back. Can you say amen? <laughs> Glory to God. But, but anyway, so this, you need, somebody out there needed to hear that. You need to check up where you're going to church. Be sure that they believe the Bible concerning the, the moving of the anointing of God, all right? Now, with that being said, this man, he, he's healed of bladder cancer, and, and his wife says, well, he says he doesn't need to come to church and he doesn't need to stay in the word of God. And I talked to him. He told me the same thing. So I sought the Lord about it. And the Lord dealt with my heart and said to tell him, didn't hear an audible voice, but tell him, tell this man that, uh, that if he doesn't stay in the word of God and if he doesn't stay in a church, now it didn't have to be my church, but it has to stay at a church where they're preaching and teaching the word of God, where they believe in healing and they're teaching and preaching the word of God. He, the Lord told me to tell him that if he didn't do that, that that bladder cancer in the process of time would come back on him. And then the Lord wanted me to tell him that, that when that comes back on him, if he doesn't get in church and stay in church and stay under the word of God and stay, you know, and so forth, that when that, come, that bladder cancer comes back on him, I wouldn't be able to help him the next time around. And so I got with him privately and I told him that. I said, dear brother, I said, you know, God has healed you. There's been a notable miracle here. It's been confirmed by medical science, totally healed the bladder cancer. I mean, they wanted to take his bladder out and the whole works and, and totally healed. And I said, you've been healed and notable miracles, healing miracles taking place. And, and you don't want to, you don't think you need to stay in the word of God and stay in, stay in a good church, good, good church. And he, I'll be honest, he was prideful. He had, he had more than a hint. He had some pride in him. I don't need that. I don't need to do that. I don't need, I don't need to go to church. I, I don't need to, I don't, I don't need to do that. <clears throat> and, uh, and, and I told him, I said, dear brother, I said, now this is what I feel the Lord told me to tell you that you need to stay in the, in, in, un, in, in church and under good teaching of the word of God and stay in the word for yourself during the week. Or, or that bladder cancer will come back on you. And uh, when it does, I won't be, I, I, me, I won't be able to help you. Now I'll be able to stand with you, stand with you, but I won't be able to, I won't be able to pray the prayer of faith for you the next time like I did the first time and it was healed. Now I'm not the healer, but God's the healer, but, but God flowed that anointing through me into him and he, he was healed of the bladder cancer. But I was telling him that if you don't stay in a church, good church, didn't have to be my church, a good church, under the word of God, that it would come back on him. And that when it does, I, I, I could be there as his friend and all of that, as his pastor and love him. But I, I, I wouldn't be able to, 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 help, to help him get that healing again. And so he, he shook his head and kind of a little prideful there. And, and that was that. And... Uh, and and then you'd see him at church just once in a blue moon. And sometime came and went. Sure enough, the diagnosis came. There's a bladder cancer. And uh, he came back. And, uh, and, and, and he came to talk to me. And I said, look, I said, I, I can't. I, I, the Lord said I, I wouldn't be able to help you this second time. You're going to have, I'll just put it blunt. Just say, you're going to have to get it on your own. You know, you can get your healing, but you're going to have to get in the Word of God and get it on your on your own, just to save time here. That's what what I told you. You're going to have to get it on your own, and uh, uh, and so, and I did. I stood with him. I, I prayed with him. I just I prayed with. Him. I just couldn't pray for him anymore. I, I just could, couldn't do it. That's what the Lord said. And uh, and I mean, he had he had friends in the church and. Different ones, everybody and their brother, just about of people he knew that you know that that church folk that he knew pray for him to no avail, to no avail. And actually, people back there then, there was a good number of people got mad at me, got angry at me because I couldn't pray the or I would wasn't a, I wasn't able to pray the prayer of faith. I could have tried to do it, but the Lord said I wouldn't be able to do it. And and boy, people got mad. Some, some people that knew him, boy, they got mad at me. And he had everybody and their brother pray, and no avail. See, it wasn't a matter of me praying for him again. We did that the first time. We could have done that, but it wasn't going to do any good. He, I think you could see, if he would have just stayed in the Word of God, 
if he'd have just stayed under the preaching of the word of God. Right? And, and, and even after he missed it and got off, the Lord in his great mercy had me go, go share with him and warn him. He still wouldn't listen. And it happened just like what, what the Lord said. And I stood with him. I prayed with him. I just couldn't pray the prayer of faith for him the second time. And uh, in the process of time, I preached his funeral. He, he's in heaven right now. He went to heaven too young. He died young. Why did I share this? To try to get you to see how important staying in the word of God is. How important to staying under the teaching of the word of God. How important it is. How important it is to stay studying and reading the word of God just privately in your daily life. Thank God for the anointing. Thank God for it. And that's what I've been teaching on for weeks. But you also have to hear this side of it. Uh, I'll... Uh, I'll tell you one final story and then I think we'll just close up here today and then I'll continue with we'll talk about the anointing within next week for the sake of time. I've given you enough here today <laughs> for you to think about, I think. and This is helpful, I think, to you. But let me give you one more story. There was a, a lady, I guess, in her mid-30s. It was in our church. And uh, she'd been diagnosed with breast cancer. And it was, it was, it, it was an aggressive uh, it was a, an aggressive thing. And uh, uh, she came to my wife and I and talked and I told her like I told so many others. I said, well, we could pray for you, general prayer right here. But I said, you know, you know and I told her, stay in, con <laughs> stay in connect c connection with your good doctors, good hospitals, good medicine. Stay, keep doing what they tell you to do. But I said, we'll be having a healing line soon. I said, just come in that healing line and we'll pray. And stay in contact with the good doctors and so forth. So, anyway, she comes in the healing line. It was real. It was like the next Sunday or whatever. Not not too long after she she told us she comes in the line. Several people, I don't know, several people in the line. And uh, I remember now on this one, I got in front of her, I laid hands on her. I didn't feel anything. Uh, but I tell you what, she. For lack of a better way of saying it, her whole body heated up. It's like her, her whole body caught on, on fire, so to speak. I mean, not flames that you could see, but I mean, she stood there and she said, heat, 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 heat. I feel like I'm on fire. I feel like I'm on fire. Heat, heat, heat. I feel like I'm on fire. She was going, whoo, 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 whoo. Ooh, she said, I feel like I'm on fire, heat, like fire, fire. I feel like I'm on fire. And this went on for a good 10, 15, 20 minutes. A couple weeks later, you know, because that waned, that, that waned and that fire feeling left her. And after that, I mean, she looked no different than when she came in. But a couple of weeks later, she here she comes with the paper from the doctor. Uh, breast cancer completely gone, totally and completely healed, totally and completely healed. Can you say amen? I can't heal anybody. <laughs> you, if you're looking to me, you're in trouble because I can't heal anybody. It's the anointing of God. Like I said, don't look at me. <laughs> you look at me, you're going to be disappointed. Look on me. If you don't know what that means, go back in the archives and find out. Praise God, the anointing is, it, you know, like Peter and John said to that, that guy at the gate there in the book of Acts, he, they said, look on us. There's the anointing was on them. All right. Look on me. There's a special anointing on me to heal the sick. All right. Don't look at me. Look on me. But she's instantly healed of this, of this uh, breast cancer in total, instantly doctors, doctors, uh, doctor report, totally, totally gone. No trace of it in her body. Totally gone. And, uh, and in prayer, uh, the word of the Lord came to me concerning her. And, and, and I, my wife and I got with her and her mother, because her mother also attended the church. And, uh, and, and I, I lovingly said to her, I said, now, it's going to be very important as we move forward in time that you stay in the word of God, that you stay, uh, you know, keep attending 
the church. It doesn't have to be my church, but attending a church that believes in the power of God, that teaches the word of God concerning healing and that you know, is teaching the word of God. It doesn't have to be a healing message every service, but you know what I'm talking about, just where they're teaching the word of God, you know, not just some kind of a mamby-pamby, you know, just a, a upbeat, uh, you know, uh, what's it called? Uh, like a, like a, 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 like a life coach type of a message every single Sunday, you know, you know what I'm talking about, but a church is teaching the, the word of God to stay under the, cause you don't, I, you don't have, I've told people this so many times. I don't have to be teaching on healing. I don't have to be teaching on the healing anointing for you to get healed. I could be teaching if I'm teaching a series on the begats out of the Bible, they're, they're anointed. Those begats are important, by the way. I could t t talk for a long time about that. But if I'm talking about the begats or whatever, I'm talking on the book of Revelation, whatever it is, there's the anointing on the word. You don't have to, the preacher doesn't have to be teaching on healing for you to get healed as long as he's teaching the word of God. Now, teaching on the anointing here, that's great. And, and, and if, you, if you are dealing with a terminal condition or whatever, I would recommend that you, you listen to messages like this. Now, I mean, the book of Revelation might not be what you want to listen to. You know, if you're facing a terminal disease, you know what I'm talking about. You want to stay and center in on the healing scriptures. But what I'm saying is, you, so, a pastor could be preaching on the book of Revelation and you can get healed on that. Glory to God. You understand, it's the word of God. I, but anyway, I told her privately, I said, now you've been healed of breast cancer, aggressive form of breast cancer. I said, now, and the word of the Lord came to me, he said, just on the inside to warn her, and I called her in with her mother, and my wife are there, and I, and I said, now look, as we move forward here, it's important that you stay in church, you stay under the word of God, you stay in the word of God, or that, that, or that, that'll come back on you. And, uh, I told her ahead of time, and then you saw her, as time went on, hit and miss Sunday morning, and she went from every Sunday to every other, and here we go. And then, and then I, second time, I, 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 I caught her privately. There's, you know, one of the Sundays she was there, I caught her privately. I said, now I see you're, you're hardly coming here anymore. And are you going anywhere? And no, 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 all of that. And I said, now I want to remind you what the Lord you know, had me warn you about and remind you that. Said, oh yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. There's a lot of, I know. And uh, then, then it's time, and I didn't badger her. I'm a very low pressure. I didn't see her, didn't see her. And next thing you know, next thing you know. And I told her, I did tell her this too. I said, now, I said, now the second time, if, if it comes back on you, it's going to be harder to get by far than the first time to get that healing. And so anyway, uh, she dropped off, didn't hardly ever see her, didn't hardly ever see her. And she didn't stay under the teaching of the word of God. She didn't stay in the word of God. And then that, that breast cancer, it, 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 it came back on her. I believe it metastasized in her body. And then, then all of a sudden now, and I'm not, I'm not trying to put anybody down or whatever, but then, okay, okay, let's, you know, let's, let, let's get in the word of God. Let's get back into church. But See, she was warned on a couple of occasions. She didn't stay in the Word of God. It, 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 and she died very young and left a couple of children behind or whatever. It's just sad. It's so sad. Didn't have to be. Didn't have to be. So the anointing is powerful. It's good. All right? And thank God when the anointing comes on, a minister and that minister lays hands on you and the power of God flows, whether you feel it or not, but the power of God flows. And, and whether the healing is instantaneous, even if the healing is instantaneous, and like I said, most of them in my ministry, they haven't been instantaneous. It's been a process. But even if it is instantaneous, all the more, I mean, in both situations, instantaneous or not, but you need to get in the Word of God and stay in the Word of God and stay in a good church where they're teaching the Word of God. Because see a lot of times people, they get hit with the power of God and they're healed instantaneously. They don't think they need to do anything else. But I'm telling you, you do. You need to stay in the Word of God. Right? But whether the, inst the healing is instantaneous or, or it's a process, either way, because a lot of times people get hit with that anointing and then they have to stay in the word of God. Like you'd get a shot from a doctor, like I said, and take your medicine and the healing, it manifests over time. But even if it manifests instantaneously and there's total healing instantaneously, either way, you need to stay in the word of God. 
Absolutely. So thank God for the anointing coming on a minister and flowing into your body and all of that. That's like the shot, but hey, stay the shot the doctor gives you, but stay in the, the Word of God under the teaching of the Word of God. And that's like taking your pills out of your bottle. And you got to, how long, do, again, how long do I have to do that? On the bottle here, it says take three times a day for seven days. Well, I'll tell you this, the Word of God. Take the Word of God at least once a day for the rest of your life. How's that? <laughs> that's a good prescription. Can you say amen? Well, I trust this has helped you today. I didn't really do much here, but just give you some testimonies. But sometimes these testimonies can do you as good as anything else, and, and they can build your faith. So, so uh, thank God for the anointing. Thank God for the, for the written word and staying under the, the preached and taught word of God. Amen. Amen. Well, I trust you got something good out of this today. Hey, we'll, we'll pick up here next week, and we'll talk about the anointing within. And there's a great blessing in that. So you'll want to hear what I have to say about that. Okay. Hey, if you're out there and you don't know Jesus as your savior, there's a heaven to gain. There's a hell to shun. To miss hell and make heaven, you have to simply repent of your sins. That just means have a change of heart, turn from your old life, turn to, turn to God. And, and, then, and then the Bible says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord Jesus will be saved. Call on his name, receive him as your Lord and savior. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. If you'll do that and mean it, he'll come in there. You'll get born again. You'll miss hell one day. You'll make heaven. And he'll, when you die, you go to heaven and not hell. That's a good deal. And he'll make your life worth living in the meantime. Okay, have a great week, and I'll see you here next week, and we'll continue with the anointing. Bye-bye.